Question 31. A function center employs staff so that all necessary tasks can be completed between the end of one function and the beginning of the next function. The network diagram shows the time taken in hours for the tasks that need to be completed. Part A. Find the two critical paths. In order to find the critical paths, we need to identify the tasks that have zero float time. In other words, the tasks that must start on time in order to finish within a certain period of time. So we're going to use critical path analysis. That means finding the earliest start time and the latest start time of each task. I'm going to go through this briefly. Now you notice that there's two numbers before and after each task. The top number is the earliest start time of that task and the bottom number is the latest start time. So that's EST and LST. So for task A, A takes six hours. So starting at zero, adding six, we get six. Task D, starting at zero, it takes four hours, so it finishes at four. Let's look at task E. Starting at four, adding two hours, we also get to six. Now notice that there's two ways to get to this vertex here. And the higher of the two numbers when finding the earliest start time goes here. So it just so happens that it takes six hours to get here, six hours to also get here. So that's why there's a six here. Moving on, if we look at task B, starting at six, adding four hours, that equals 10. But notice that I've got a 13 here. That's because there's another way to get to this vertex here. Let's go back to vertex F, starting at four, adding two, we get to six. Notice that there's a nine here because there's another way to get to this vertex also. Let's look at task H, starting at zero, adding two hours, we get to two hours here. Two plus seven, gives us nine, and that's why there's a nine here. So look at task G, nine plus four gives us 13. Let's look at task C, 13 plus four gives us 17. Let's look at task J, two plus 12 gives us 14. 17 is the higher of the two numbers, which is why the 17 goes here for the EST. Let's do the backward scanning. So that's why we have the bottom number here. So starting at 17 and working backwards, 17 minus four gives us 13. 17 minus eight gives us nine. Now 17 minus 12 gives us five, but we have a two here. I'll show you how this two arises. 17 minus eight gives us nine. Nine minus seven gives us two. It's the lower of the two numbers that goes on the bottom here for the latest start time. So continuing on, we end up with these ESTs and LSTs as shown for all these tasks. So let's determine the float time of each task. If we look at task J, 17, so you take the LST after the task, subtract the time that the task takes, so 17 minus 12, then subtract the EST before that task. So 17 minus 12 minus two gives us a float time of three. So J is not on the critical path. Let's look at K, 17, so LST minus the activity time, minus eight, minus nine gives us zero. So K is on a critical path. So I'm just going to mark that with a highlighter. If you can see that, I might use a different color, I might use green. Yep, yeah, that's easier to see. Okay, let's have a look at task I. So nine, minus seven, minus two, also gives us a float time of zero. So this task is also on a critical path. Let's 
try one more. Let's look at task B, 13, minus four, minus six, gives us a flight time of three. So task B is not on a critical path. And I've marked the rest accordingly. So just continuing on the same way, we end up with these float times that I've marked next to each of these tasks. And so the two critical paths are H, I, and K. So that's this task here, this task here, and this task here, and H, I, G, C. So I'll try and use the yellow highlighter again, make that a little bit more prominent. So H, I, G and C. And the length of both of those critical paths is 17 hours. Part B. The function center wants to decrease the length of each critical path by three hours. They can do this by hiring more staff to do one of the tasks so that it takes less time to complete. For which task should the centre hire more staff and how long should that task take to ensure all tasks can be completed in 14 hours? We need to identify one task on the critical paths that we found in part A in order to reduce the total activity time by three hours. In other words, rather than finishing at 17 hours, we finish in 14 hours. So if we look at both critical paths that we found in part A, we have H, I, and K, and we have H, I, G, and C. What we do notice is that H and I are common tasks on both of those critical paths. In other words, if we chose, let's say, activity G and reduce that by three hours, that's all well and good for the critical path that's marked in yellow, but the critical path that's marked in green will still take 17 hours, so that does not help our cause. And for the same reason, activity C cannot be reduced because it does not affect the critical path that's marked in green. We have to choose either activity H or activity I to reduce, and it can only be one or the other, can't be a combination of both. So if we choose activity H, well, it's two hours already. We cannot reduce that by three hours. In other words, if we do that, it'll take negative one hours, which doesn't make any sense. So the only task left that we could choose that would reduce both critical parts by three hours is activity I or task I. In my answer, this is what I wrote as my sample solution. H, I are common tasks on both critical paths. H cannot be reduced by three hours since it is already two hours. And only task I can be reduced by three hours and its activity time will be seven minus three, which equals four hours.